someone needs to step forward and they both don't want to step forward in that way. Yes. They both want the other person to do it. Yes. There is an unhealthy part of me. Like if this was like a fictional TV show or like a YA novel, I would be like, yes, oh, yeah. I love this. I would be all over it, but it's not. It's real life. It's <laughs> real life. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Kelly, she's Julie, and we're here to find love. And as you can see, this is a special episode because we're in person. We're in person. Hi. We've never filmed an episode of Here to Find Love in the same room. We live on opposite sides of this country, and so we're <laughs> always like just zooming each other. So we are back again this week for another Bachelor recap. Today we're recapping episode seven of Joey's season of The Bachelor, and we have our final four, which is super exciting. So we're gonna talk about the four ladies that Joey is taking to hometowns, as well as the girls who have been sent home. We are a little heartbroken. So sad. It's really sad. We have a lot to get into. For those of you who don't know us, we're two dating coaches who analyze the relationship psychology themes in reality TV shows like The Bachelor. So if you're into this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button to follow along and join the conversation. You can also listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And next week, we have a very special guest coming on the show. So tune in and you'll see who it is. It's a really good one. I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite people in Batch Nation. Ah, <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be so good. Tune in. <laughs> tune in. <laughs> so it is the week before hometowns. We now officially know that our final four are Daisy, Kelsey A. Oh my god, I almost said Jen because I just wanted to be Jen We're in my heart. Over here. In my heart, I like literally pictured Jen's face and I was like, it's Jen. It's not Jen. Jen is not in the top four. Oh my gosh, it's really emotional. Maria and Rachel are a top four, a wonderful top four, I will say. It's a great top four. I mean, his top six was epic. When right. I saw all of them, you know, just kind of coming over the hills of Canada, I thought these are maybe the best girls we've seen in a while. I, I really do think like he actually has like a really top tier. I mean, the group of women were awesome. And Amazing. these six girls were like so great. But we have our top four now. Let's talk about the girls who went home and then we can get into the girls who are going to hometowns. Let's start off with Jen because I think Jen is the one that all Surprising. of us- Surprising. Yeah, no are so emotional it. about this. Yeah, so when Jen went home i mean we were watching the episode live and we just genuinely did not expect it they had such amazing chemistry she snuck in that little kiss when he was doing his interview and he made pretty intense promises of being completely okay with her family right she was very insecure she said in particular that her family it wouldn't be the hometown date where he would feel comfortable and he said some things that made it seem like he was going to not only comfort her, but walk her through that experience. <sighs> so it was a little bit of a bummer to see him attract that by not giving her the rose. But I, I absolutely related to her storyline of her right. just, you know, being Vietnamese, her having a family that maybe doesn't understand this dating experience. She was so open about the this complex family structure that he was entering right. that the show has never seen before. Right. Yeah. I, I, I really was so happy when she opened up about that and I was getting so excited to see that hometown date because we so rarely see hometowns that are anything other than that kind of maybe like stereotypical like American Perfect. family, like yeah. everyone's super close. They all crack jokes, we're jovial, we, you know, family is everything. You know, my mom knows me better than anyone else, like she's my best friend. Like that's always the, you know, the typical family structure that we see on this show. I mean, there have been exceptions to that, but that's really the family structure that's kind of mm -hmm. put on a pedestal, really. It's propped up on The Bachelor for sure, because every other family, I would say, the other girls that he had kind of did say the same thing where they were like oh my god i'm so close to my parents it really means so much my family's opinion and it was like jen was saying my family's opinion doesn't mean that much because they're not going to understand yes not because she doesn't value it it's just a completely different environment that he is going to be presented with right. and i i mean i'm a first gen vietnamese i definitely relate to a lot of what she was saying i've experienced where I've had boyfriends come home and meet my parents and maybe I didn't give the full details about my relationship or mm -hmm. the length or how we met each other because mm -hmm. I wanted it to be above board or I wanted it to match my parents' expectations of what it means to be in a relationship with somebody. Yes. So I think that Jen was definitely navigating a really murky 
area that no contestant has ever really paved the roadway. Yes. So I, I wanted to see that. Well, thank you for sharing that, Julie, because I, I had that same thought of, wow, this would be such a different type of hometown because uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with families that are really close. That's beautiful. We love it. <laughs> love to see it. But right. there are different types of families where, yeah. you know, the relationship between child and parent isn't exactly that like buddy buddy thing. I think this is especially common, like you said, in Asian American households and definitely like first gen or like families where there is an immigrant experience involved. Maybe the parents immigrated here from another country. They have a different culture that they grew up in and they are, you know, trying to integrate into American culture versus their children who then are born in America, born into American culture and have that Americanization kind of like in their blood because they're just living and growing up here in the U.S that creates a bit of a divide, a generational divide, a cultural divide between you and your parents. And that can be a really unique type of struggle to feel like we are from different universes is what it can sometimes feel like. And that's how Jen kind of described it. She said that her family, or maybe she was speaking specifically about her parents, I can't quite remember, but she said like, you know, they don't fully understand her. They don't understand American culture in the that way that she does. And so it means that it can be kind of hard to maybe like translate what's happening in Jen's life in a way that like actually makes sense to her parents. Yeah. And that can create, you know, a, a type of disconnection, not to say that there's not love there, but you might not have the same level of maybe like intimacy. Like you said, you can't like share all the nuances of your relationship because, you know, maybe they have a different understanding of what relationship should look like based on their culture, right? Yeah, and it could be something a little bit more traditional than how the show, it's so modern, it's so contemporary mm -hmm. of how you find your partner. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, it was so interesting because this episode, we really got to see uh, Joey up close in terms of how he handled conflict, how he was not only able to just soothe somebody, but come through on the things that he was saying because yeah. he has been very pacifying a lot of conversations and I didn't love how he handled the conversation with Jen mm. whether it's Daisy and her hearing condition or it's Lexi and her fertility issue. Yeah he's been so supportive of all Completely. of these different challenges. He's like let me get into it let me know and I felt like with Jen it's not like he didn't give her that same type of generosity but it was a little bit severe how he just made specific comforts to her where she literally told him i feel so much better i really needed to hear that then he retracted it and he didn't walk her out and i understand that you know two people went home but it just felt like out of everybody on the show at that point she was maybe the most obviously into him yes like you could see it in the, on the camera yeah absolutely it was just like all right goodbye hope you find your person Mm -hmm. That's it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. It was a little harsh. It's also because her and Joey had an amazing connection. Seriously, it so was... It's surprising. Like, I just genuinely didn't... I didn't know who was going to send home. I knew Kelsey T, maybe. I just wasn't seeing it with the both of them. But not Jen. I know. Not Jen. Like, <sighs> Jen just seemed to be... They were so into each other, and it was so positive the entire time that I just thought for some reason that Joey would have been able to because he did hear her story about not fitting in with the family or it not being a comfortable experience. And I wish that it's such a common experience in dating, especially for interracial relationships. I was gonna say. Right, like, that it's like, you kind of just go past that, I like wonder, your relationship. Do you think that that's part of why he sent her home? I mean, I don't know. It's don't know. it's very weird. I didn't expect it from him. I was, I, I don't know, because I just, they, they felt so strong all along. They felt so strong. And you're right, like, she did say that thing about, like, you're not going to feel comfortable at my hometowns. Like, it, other hometowns might be about you fitting in with the family. You're not going to fit in with my family. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is about. And mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe that rubbed him the wrong way or like didn't maybe or maybe just not that it rubbed him the wrong way but I don't I'm not sure or maybe he I did notice that this episode he was just very uncomfortable with discomfort and that could have been a thing say more in terms of like with Jen that it wasn't I think that he really did see hometowns as a turning point for him mm -hmm. I am going to understand them I'm going to understand who I'm choosing and he keeps wanting them to invest in him before he invested them yeah he did do that a lot right you're absolutely right so i wonder if like with her family her not being her family not being able to support it then it's too it's, hard for him like maybe it's a little bit tenuous because if there's a community or like a lot of people approving it giving that stamp of like go then he feels more comfortable in it 
I'm, I'm not totally sure, but it did throw me off a little bit why Jen went home above. I mean, I love Rachel, but even Rachel, I wasn't even seeing a lot of chemistry. The like same I, way as Jen. I would say it was maybe equal, but maybe Jen was a little bit more of that sparkly. Yeah. And Rachel just feels very comfortable. It's but, hard to, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I wonder, you're right, if there is something to do with that, like wanting to feel a level of like, just like they're so confident in him so and confident. maybe the experience of like knowing that her family wouldn't maybe approve or understand scared him off. I don't know. Maybe that's a project, uh, not a projection. a projection. Maybe it's just like a over an overstatement. But you're right. Like the, the thing is, it's common though. That's like that's what an interracial relationship is like. But what I will say is that often interracial relationships on The Bachelor involve families that are, I think, more American. Know, like Americanized or yeah. assimilated into American culture in in certain ways. And so like it's very often it's like a white person. Yeah. Um, integrating into a black family and there's like some relationship between those two backgrounds or even like you know a someone who is like half Asian half white and so there is that mm -hmm. that marriage of those two cultures kind of already happened in that person's home and then they're dating a white guy and so it's like that's exactly it's like maybe a little easier maybe the, de the degree of difference between Joey and Jen I mean this was all unspoken so it might just we might just be yeah, going and into just it. going into it. So I'm I'm not sure, but maybe that degree of difference yeah was more pronounced than we are we maybe could we tell. perceived. Yeah, I, know. I I think that there is one thing about Joey is that he wants to be completely sure yeah about someone before they get engaged, and he has so many other people where it's awful. But on the show, there is this comparison where you can't right. literally value stack them based right. on what they can offer and score them as with compatibility and yeah. it just seems like maybe there's something about jen that was lacking that he felt so he decided not to bring or not to meet her parents but yeah. it was it, it was a little bit surprising to me i think that jen just made a lot of sense i would have really loved to have seen that experience represented yeah. on tv yeah. it would have been just really it would have been awesome and I think they could have been a really good couple. I think so too. I'm just, I guess I'm just disappointed. I just want to like find any explanation any for it because I'm like, what is this? It should have happened. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, let us know down below what you all thought about Joey and Jen's relationship and also just about Jen's story about her family and her relationship to her family. Anyone relate? Anyone have anything to share in the comments? We always love having these types of conversations. So yeah, let's keep it going down below. By the way, guys, we're on Instagram. We've been posting a lot of really cute things since Kelly's been in town visiting. So please be sure to come there. Check us out. We're posting some really secret or some cool like behind the scenes stuff yes. over the next few days. It's really cute, actually. Like, <laughs> honestly, Y'all have already missed some if you didn't see it all right. Because there's been some <laughs> cute shit in our stories. It's just the truth. It's just the truth, yeah. <laughs> so the second person who went home this episode was Kelsey T. Not completely surprising, but oh, it was really sad to see her go home. I know, I agree. I mean, she also talked about her family, specifically her relationship with her dad, as being a fraught one. And I think she even mentioned that she wasn't sure if he would be at her hometowns if she were to have a hometown. So that would have been another interesting story to have explored. At this point with this top six, I, I think there was something there with them at the beginning and it just kind of couldn't keep up with the way Joey's relationships were moving with the other women. So I wasn't completely surprised to see her go. Even she seemed a little bit like she kind of knew it was she was on the outs in her like limo exit. I love that she just, they were like asking her for a reaction. She just like said nothing I was like, Give them nothing. Give, Give them, them nothing. nothing. I totally agree. <laughs> I was thinking about that with Jen and Kelsey T. I'm actually happy that he sent them home because they have complex families. She's dealing with religious trauma. Mm. Jen has this immigrant experience where maybe some, like there could have been judgment from her parents or something that she had to like heal and process in this kind of like experience. Mm -hmm. So it was probably a good thing that he decided not to if he didn't think he was going to choose them not to like get that experience or not to have them kind of face that maybe that's a good way of putting it like less that joey was like "Ooh, your family's complicated i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm gonna just send you home for that but maybe it was more like what you're saying of for me to come into your family 
where there is a little yeah. bit more um, delicacy that is needed because your family is a yeah. little bit different. Like, I only want to do that if I'm so, so, so sure about you. And if I'm not at right. that level of certainty, I should just send you home. So in that sense, I do kind of understand why maybe like understanding Kelsey T and Jen's more complicated stories maybe made him have to look. It's kind of like when a contestant has a child, you kind of have to think a little bit more before you decide to progress to hometown to like yeah, meet absolutely. the kid. It's like you just have to give like a much more fine tuned level of like thought. Mm -hmm. I almost wonder if this is kind of similar. It's like, ooh, like I'm being introduced yeah. to a complicated family. It's gonna be hard for you to do that, hard for you to show your family on screen. I should only make you do that if if I it's know, worth this is it. gonna go to the end. Right, yeah. exactly. And so Yeah. And that's a really I love that you brought up that point because I do really love Jen and Kelsey T, but they're definitely not the top three. Mm. Top four, but not top three. So I just don't see him they wouldn't have made it to the end. So I do see that could be a good reason of Joey being like, Okay, like I really do like you, but it's going to be kind of intense if like I send you home in the next episode and you already have the stuff of your family. Yeah. So let me just send you home now. And you know, that does make sense. I was really sad to see Kelsey T go, but overall I also think Kelsey T was the least compatible with Joey oh, yeah. in the sense that like, I, I do think that they are both look at his top girls. All of them actually are girls with like, kind of like big, bigger personalities. Like Kelsey T to me is someone, she is the soft of somebody else's heart. And like, I I think she needs a partner that has that like big heart, like loud personality to kind of balance her out because she is like the soft, the soft girl. And like, I think she needs someone who has a bigger personality than Joey versus like all those other girls who are left are like Daisy with the sparkly personality, Jen, Maria, mm -hmm. even Rachel, like she can hang, I guess, Kelsey A, which we'll get to. I still have a question mark with her. I don't understand mm. her personality. I like her a lot. I think he likes her a lot. I just don't understand. But mostly those girls are all people with big personalities. And so Kelsey T was the outlier in that sense. Mm. And so it did make sense to me why she went home. I hope there's a paradise because I think she's going to thrive on paradise. Yeah. Like I think she'll do so well. And there's so many men from Bachelor Nation that I would love to just like, if they were like dolls, I just want to like smush their together. faces together. There's like a lot of men in Bachelor Nation that I think would be such a great fit for Kelsey T. I it just don't think that double. Joey is one of them. Yeah, I agree. So they're better off. They're Conclusion, better off. Conclusion, they're better off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Send them to the beaches. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so let's get into our top four. His first one on one was with Daisy. Yes. And that was a really, probably one of the cutest, most hallmark dates I've seen on the show. Yeah. The horse riding, overlooking that amazing vista. That little song playing. That little song with lyrics. <laughs> yes. I know. When is that ever They happen? have a budget for Daisy's date. I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> they do. And then she had like that hot tub thing. And it's so fascinating because a lot of people really love Daisy. I see it. I get the allure. I think she has a really incredible story. I just don't see a lot of chemistry between her and Daisy. And I just wasn't, even on this date, it felt like he was more into her. He was looking at her face, her lips, wanting to be in contact. And she was a little bit an arm's length mm. and I felt like there is this power dynamic we'll, we'll get into Maria but there is also that with Maria where it's like he is like they're the lead mm. and he's kind of like oh choose me like me do this do that and they're the ones that are determining the pace or the flow or the escalation of how things move Ooh. because I just I don't know Daisy hasn't really been jealous over the last few episodes which is valid but it is a little bit surprising if she is going to be a front runner like the editors are making it seem like she's going to be. Yeah. I just want to see a little bit of investment. Uh, yeah, like yeah, attention, yeah, yeah. Right? Where yeah. she's like, well, this experience is getting to me or I really like this guy and I'm really surprised. Yeah. Instead, she's just a little bit like, oh, I do like you, but I can't say that I'm in love with you. Right. I mean, this is her whole storyline. This whole entire arc. arc. I'm with you. I... I really like Daisy herself and I'm not sure that I'm seeing it with Joey and I keep thinking like I think people yeah. are confusing the fact that we like Daisy with the fact that oh Joey should end up with her exactly and I don't actually think I mean I do kind of feel like he's gonna pick her but I actually don't think their relationship feels like the strongest in comparison to 
other people. And her whole storyline this episode was like, I'm not sure that I can say I love you, which by the way, we love it. We love a realistic gal. We love someone being, you know, upfront about the fact that they're not just like gonna fall in love in four weeks and just say I love you for a rose. Yeah, realistic. Love it. I mean, that's yeah, great. Down to earth. Down to earth. And also, I was a little confused of why she was even talking about it because no one has said that they were in love with Joey yet. Like, not a single one. They've said, I'm falling for you, but no one has said, I'm in love with Joey. So I don't even know why she was like harping on this. She was like, really, like, I'm not in love with you, just so you know. And I was like, ah. You don't, it's not really necessary. Like maybe the producers were pushing her to talk about this, but it yeah. did feel a little bit like no one asked you to be in love with him already. I don't know, I don't know why she felt the need to, to say that. And to your point, maybe it's because she is feeling a little bit of like, ooh, my relationship or my feelings for Joey aren't progressing as fast as I would have thought. Like mm. maybe that's why she's bringing it up to your point. Maybe right. there is a little bit of a question mark in her head about if she actually likes Joey, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm with you that I'm not, I'm not feeling these two. I'm not feeling them. And it's at least to me when I was watching the episode, it was pretty apparent that he likes her more than she likes him. I, I think so. And she can get there, but for Joey to really be there for that feeling to sustain, not like because it's a spark right now and you have to fan the flames right yeah so it can blow out into this full relationship yeah. he needs her to get there too and he has said that so many times he this episode it. yeah it's a really big insecurity of his and he's like i need you to opt in before i opt in it's not fair for him to do that but that is what he's asking for yeah he is saying that right and i see that i mean i kind of am reminded when i've been in situations where the guy likes me more mm. it turns me off it doesn't turn me off but i'm just a little bit like well like what you want i don't know if i'm there yet i like you but this is kind of going too fast yes i know what you're talking about you know like that feeling of because i was noticing it when they're in the hot tub he just kept staring at her eyes i know or like, like trying to kiss her and she was just like doing this like looking away kind of like pushing from off. so much it yes, was a yes. Bit cringy when i was watching it like ugh, i know exactly that that feeling, feeling, that feeling of had. like you know he's so he's like trying to kiss you, you and you're, and just, then you're like, just like looking in the distance uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh i didn't even notice yeah. mm. My family's everything to me. My family. <laughs> they have to like approve you before I can get right, into you. Right, right. It just kind of felt like she was like back off or like this is my pace or this is, you know, like it kind of felt like she was a bachelorette to be honest. Uh, yeah. And he was like, oh, like, can I please go to hometowns and meet your family? I mean, she has that bachelorette. She has such main character she energy does. is the funny thing. And again, I think that's kind of why we all are like, it's her like yeah. it must be her but when you I, I really do think like looking at their relationship I'm just like Ugh, it's just not there I don't really know that I would pick this I have one other thing to say about Daisy which is the thing that she brought up in their conversation I think um in the hot tub or maybe in the evening portion of the date she brought up this thing where she said I want the kind of love where even when they hate you they mm -hmm. love you Ooh, tell me your thoughts God, I hate when people say this stuff. I really, really dislike it. it it's like mm. that kind of language. It's kind of like when couples on social media, like they'll be posting like a cute photo of them like on Valentine's Day or like a birthday or something. And they'll write a little paragraph oh, about yes. what they think. But then yes. in the paragraph, they'll say things like, you know, you put me through shit, but I love you anyway. Or yeah. like, we fought to get here. I know <laughs> marriage is the hardest thing I've ever done, but I still love you. I'm like, yeah. Oh God, this relationship has taught me that you need to be willing to go through the lowest lows to be with the one you love. Mm -hmm. Like, girl, what? <laughs> like, um, you know, you're supposed to like the person that you're with. Yeah. You're supposed to like them. It's yeah. not supposed to feel like that kind of, that kind of tension. Yes, all relationships mm -hmm. will have highs and lows. All relationships are gonna, you know, have, have seasons. That is just part of the cycle of being in a relationship. However, there will be lows in your relationship, but that shouldn't be a defining quality of your relationship such that like Daisy's literally saying like, this is what I want from a relationship. It's like, ugh, like that's, I don't know. It shouldn't be so hard that it is, the defining quality is that you guys have to like work really hard to mm -hmm. stay together. I think of Gottman, right? Gottman's four horsemen of divorce. So these are like the four predictors of divorce in married couples. One of them is contempt and contempt is like this feeling of kind of like this like mean spirited 
sarcasm or like disgust or belittling belittling exactly yeah. like just like this feeling of like you're kind of like looking down your partner slightly and like that's what i think of when people say that thing of like oh i hate my partner sometimes i hate them it's like if you are looking at your partner through that lens and it's like a defining quality of your relationship of course we all sometimes have trouble in our relationship but if that's like a defining feature of how you see your partner yeah i really do think that that's not a good sign and that that is we got to be careful about the language we are using to talk yeah. about our partner to talk about our relationship and you know i think it's okay to say something like i want to be with someone who can be kind and loving toward me even when we are in conflict i want to be with someone who can be kind and supportive of me and empathetic even when they're angry with me like that i get but to say i want someone who like we're gonna hate each other but we'll love each other anyway that's like we gotta be careful with our words there because mm. that isn't the type of feeling that i think should be heralded as a positive so i don't know i just they felt like they were on different pages i didn't love that daisy brought that up so the mm. whole thing just felt like really squishy to me mm. i love that point yeah that comment went right over my head when she said that because i was just looking at their lack of physical chemistry on the screen but you're you're totally right and I wonder if, and this is an overreach, this could be a total speculation, but maybe she hasn't had super healthy relationships. Interesting. Or it's been colored by fighting mm. or intensity or like an avoidant, anxious dating, which is the attachment style where somebody is, you know, like you advance, someone pulls away. That's a very common dating pattern. Maybe that's something that she's experienced. Yes. Because yes. it's very consistent with her and Joey and now that I think about it, do we really know a lot about Daisy outside of her health problems? Like, has like, she said anything about dating? I don't know. Well, Joey is, talk is talking about the fact that, like, in the past, I've dealt with girls or, like, partners who, like, wouldn't affirm me or weren't confident in me. And, like, I had to kind of, like, feel I was insecure about how they felt about me. So he's mm -hmm. talked about that. I don't know. I'm not is sure she, about Daisy. I can't. Is she, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really know her relationship. History. with relationships yeah exactly so i mean and she did say she hasn't dated since her hearing loss yeah so that could have been a thing but i just wonder if interesting there's some tension that she's attracted to and Ooh. it's not toxic it could just be maybe it's a relationship where there's a little bit of that challenge or yeah. it's kind of like provocative in the way that you're engaging with each other oh, but see that's the thing that i not that i hate it i think right. it's good to be challenged and challenging each other like i don't think that kind of relationship is inherently unhealthy, but yeah, like she's aspiring towards it though. It's weird. There's it's something, so... yeah, because she's like, oh, I just want it, and that's such. I wouldn't say that's Joey's value. I yeah. can't see him telling somebody, I want to be with you even if we hate each other. Right. He, like he says a lot, like I want to be with you, and we're gonna be confident. We're in it. That's kind of how he's organizing his beliefs around love or compatibility or commitment. Daisy seems a little bit more like, you know, no matter what, we're just with each other. Yeah, and that's different. It's different. And you it's know different. what? Like, honestly, like Joey needs so much. Um, he wants security and validation. So he the idea validation. that Daisy's like, well, sometimes I'm going to hate you. It's like, but just know I'm going to choose you. I don't know, though. But like, I don't, I don't ever want to feel like my partner hates me. Yeah, <laughs> like, that okay. sounds not pleasant. It and sounds it, unhealthy. I also feel like Joey wouldn't like that feeling of yeah. feeling like his partner hates him his whole thing is wanting to feel accepted as he is and so yeah, i don't know the more i think about it the more i'm like i don't know about these two <laughs> they seem like a perfect on paper match joey seems into her and i wonder if the challenge of her not validating affirming him is why He's keeping her around because there's like his self worth maybe of like I want to like achieve this. I'm making this girl it. love me. Yes, oh, no. right? There's something about because if you're craving validation, <sighs> then you're kind of like fixating on this particular point. And I was really surprised when she said, you know, she shared her thing about her not being able to fall for Joey or that she just wanted to take her time and. I'm glad that Joey did speak up for his needs a lot this episode and then he gave yes. her the rose right away. But I was like, hmm, I wonder why he's doing it. Yes. When there's other people that are clearly more into him. Yes. So then what's Ooh, the, what's why, the deal? Why is Daisy? Yeah. 
Okay, it's a it's a good point. It's a good question. I want to know what other people have to say tell about this down below. Down below, tell us mm -hmm. what you think. What did you think about Daisy and Joey's relationship in this episode, and what we've learned about them so far? Yes. Do you like their relationship? And keep it separate from the fact that I think everyone loves Daisy, of course. She's yeah. great, but then it's the combination. It's the like, is yeah. that actually right? Exactly. Yeah, let's think about what Joey wants because Joey's thinking from that perspective too. Right. Okay, so let's move on to talking about our other top four. We have Kelsey A and Rachel. I'm going to kind of talk about them in the same breath because Rachel didn't even receive any screen time in this episode. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't even see her. And so I'm not surprised why everyone was surprised that she got a rose because <laughs> We don't, it's been a while since we've really seen these two like vibing off and like the edit is doing her a disservice because we don't. Absolutely. We don't see them. We don't see her. I mean, she chugged that elk milk. Great. Outside <laughs> of that, I just, I love Rachel because of the last episode, but I just didn't. I was very surprised that he gave her the rose. Yeah. I'm happy, but I'm, I'm surprised. Right. I, I, I feel the exact same way. I actually think they're a very good match. I actually think there's a real compatibility there because we talked about this last week it feels like she's the only one who is seeing joey's struggles and like talking about yeah. them not just saying like you're amazing you're perfect she's like i know you're an overthinker i know you're gonna overthink this yeah. and i want to support you and i love you anyways yeah she's the only one who's going to that level with him that we've mm -hmm. seen anyway so i like her i just I would found myself surprised because we don't see them talking. Yeah, we don't. Like, what? What's the deal? Yeah. So I have nothing really else to say, but I'm happy and I'm excited to see her hometown. And then with Kelsey A, they had this really great Cute polar date. plunge. Polar plunge. Like a polar plunge date, and it was great. I feel the same way about her that I felt the entire season. He's in love with her. He's so in, he's so into her. She's so hot and cute, and he's in love with her. And I don't know anything about her personality. And that's that's the same. I've literally, since the first night, I think she was one of the people I picked out. You you loved her from the very beginning. I, I, I said that Joey seems into her because she's so pretty. And he seems infatuated with how pretty she is. As but I don't have anything to say about her. And that's the same way I feel. Like, I don't think that we're getting maybe her personality enough for me to say anything about mm. their relationship. Other than the fact that he's in love with her. Right. And that's it. <laughs> but if we go based off of vibes, it's like she has Daisy's personality if Daisy was actually into Joey. Ah, you're right. You're right. Okay, that's a good one. She it. has the smiliness where she's just staring at him and so happy in her yes. face when she, yes. she really wears her emotions on her face yes. and her sleeve. And she has a little bit of that... Uh, the energy, that aliveness, that vitality mm -hmm. from Maria, but without any of the complexity or, like dare drama. I say, drama manipulation slightly. Ooh, we'll get a, to it. We'll get to it, because Maria is really what we want to spend time talking about. Yeah. But yeah, like she she has some of that. Like It's like as if she has all of the best qualities from all of the other girls that he likes, mm -hmm. and it's in Kelsey A. That's a good way of putting it, actually. She's my new front runner. I think he should pick her, but I still think he's gonna pick Daisy. Ugh, I think that would be a mistake. I think it would be a mistake would too. Be a mistake. I think he should yeah. pick Kelsey A. And right now, I feel like he even likes her the most, but I think he's gonna trip up for some reason and pick Daisy. Maybe for the reason that you're saying, which is like the struggle is there and he just wants that validation from her. And he keeps her around for that reason. It's so sad. It's so sad because Kelsey A is giving it to him. I She's know. telling him, oh my gosh, I like you so much. And she has shown throughout the process, we haven't seen a lot of her, but her emotions for Joey are very, very apparent. Last week, she was feeling jealous. He had to like reassure her. And it shows like, okay, she's getting yes. bothered by the process just like Maria, but she's not spiraling like a Maria. Because when you're in conflict with your partner, you are getting to see what they're, a little sneak peek of what they're like when you have arguments or disagreements or when something happens in the relationship. And she has an ability to be present to her emotions, regulate, talk to him about it, but not make it his problem. Yes. That's yes. not, Maria couldn't do that. Should we go into Maria? I think we should go into Maria. Let's go into her. But let us know down below what yeah. you all thought about Kelsey A and about Rachel. Were you surprised about either of them? Are you rooting for either of them? Who yes. Who's your front runner right now? We're going to get into Maria in a second, but leave down below your thoughts on these two and all of them, really. I'm yes. so excited to hear what people think. No spoilers in the comments if yeah, you have them. We don't know. We're keeping it unspoiled, so please. Okay, so that takes us to Maria, who is kind of the star of Joey's season, apparently. <laughs> I just 
I mean, hasn't stopped. I, I, I love her, so I have no problems with this. I am constantly in love with her, even when she is like kind of maybe not doing the best ever at relationships. I still am like in love with her. This episode was, I wouldn't call it her shining moment no. <laughs> in terms of what she was up to. So basically, she starts freaking out because she got on a group date and she saw Jen kiss Joey and she's just feeling insecure and she's talking about the fact that hometowns is next week and it's weird to introduce someone to her family who isn't sure about her which is valid i get it yeah. that is a legitimate fear but then she goes in the evening portion of that group date and basically kind of threatens to leave or like fakes that she oh, is it going. so bad it's something that i think i would do slash have done at the age of 20 yeah and i think exactly maria is what 29 nine that is something I definitely, I'm sure I did that at the age of 20. I would like threaten to leave someone because I was, I just wanted the validation of them like asking me not to go and right. like exactly. running after me. Like exactly. I wanted that feeling of like, like we've all we, done it. We've all done it. Right. Yeah. I, I, I get it. I, I understand, but you know, but Joey, Joey, like Joey, he's so sensitive. His biggest fear is it's, literally that. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Oh. I was like, this is not for Joey like yeah. this is it's not, not gonna work on him it's not the mess that Joey can handle I yeah. feel like um he can handle any mess right any mess of the heart any mess of the emotion but not this right it's like and the funny thing was he was so cute about it he said like um you know I'm shocked I'm so I'm like really hurt about it like are you sure but he was like I'm not gonna force you to stay he wasn't like I'm gonna like do this little dance with you I'm gonna try to pull you back he knows that truth which is that if someone needs to go, you got to just let them go. You're not going to, you can't beg someone to stay with you. You can't force someone to stay with you. Mm -hmm. And he had, he clearly has that truth inside of him, even though it was also clear that he didn't want her to go. I think he knew that she didn't actually want to go. And I think that he knew that she wanted him to like beg her to stay or whatever. I think he actually knew all of those things, but he was like, I'm not gonna I'm force, gonna force you to stay. I'm not gonna participate in this unhealthy dynamic. I of, respect it. And I respect it. He knew what she wanted him to do, but he wasn't gonna stoop to that level almost. And it was just kind of hard to watch. I really felt for him. I felt for her too. What did you think about this, Julie? Yeah, I I mean, as you were talking about it, I was flashing back to the <laughs> entire episode and it was just, I think that Maria is not used to not being pined over or obsessed over or given the same validation that Joey's also seeking. Mm. She's not as insecure about it, but it was, I was thinking about that moment when she was crying, obviously wanting him to go into the room and comfort her. Yeah. And he was on the couch, clearly pissed off and annoyed yes. that he was even dealing with it. And they were both wanting to be chased. Yes. And it was so clear. And it's like that, the polarity that has existed between Joey and Maria has been the polarity of she's exciting, she brings mm -hmm, me forward, mm -hmm. but in this moment, they're so polar opposite and someone needs to step forward and they both don't want to step forward in that way. Yes. They both want the other person to do it. Yes. So I was thinking, okay, that is not a good match because in conflict, Maria clearly lives for that kind of drama and it's not in a bad way, but it's a drama of... I want to feel like you are choosing me, so I'm going to throw a little bit of chaos, a little bit of a tantrum. Yes. And yes. I want to see you show up yes. by you kind of like mobilizing or changing your plans or doing something yes. to be like, I'm yes. choosing you. It's yes. a very clear demonstration of affection, and he is not about that. Mm -hmm. So it was so it was interesting to see those two things, and it was also interesting to see her manipulation because i would say it's a little bit manipulative it's a bit of it's a bit of a it's a form of manipulation yeah. even though i don't think she was intentionally trying to manipulate yeah. him it wasn't malicious it is a it's a subconscious way of trying to control someone and get something out of them which is what manipulation is yes it's self-sabotaging as well yes and that's the exact antithetical idea of what he's looking for in a relationship he's looking for like something self-soothing self-nurturing nourishing these qualities where it's like you're rock solid no mm. matter what. Mm. Maria is like a she's very wavy in this way, and that's not drama. That I, maybe it's drama he's had in the past, but yeah. he's not willing to repeat with this partner because yes. he is so steadfast about wanting a person where 
I mean, he said this to multiple people during the episode, but if I am choosing you and I'm getting down on one knee, it's a thousand percent. Yes. He yes. has committed to that and they've committed to it and he just knows that. So Maria just kind of, I mean, I'm sure she had an idea of that, but she couldn't let her emotions, uh, she couldn't stop it from getting the better of her. And then when they were sitting down, she just kept saying a few comments, but I was like, Maria, just chill out. Yeah. Uh, the comment where she said, uh, I'm not gonna kiss you because I saw someone else kiss you. And oh he's just God. like, are you really gonna not allow me to have this process, this experience? Yeah. Cause that is the experience he's on. She right. was being very self-serving oh with that comment, being a little bit of a girlfriend. If I have claimed <sighs> you and I'm used to getting my way, so why don't I just have you? Yeah. Like why do you need to keep having this process? <laughs> yes, it was like, um, God, and the funny thing was, she was like kind of like smiling through it all too. She was like trying to be like, cute it was charming. It was her usual charm. Yes. In this situation, but, but it, it was, was not, turn off it was Joey. not appropriate. It yeah. was not the right way or place to deploy that. And you're right, that scene, I will say his response, because then when she eventually kisses him and he's like, oh my God, woman, you're all over the place. Yeah. I will say I swooned. I was like, oh, did you? It was so cute. Ooh, I had a different take Really? Today. I was like, oh my God, Joey, I am dead. I, I will say like, there's an unhealthy part of me. Like if this was like a fictional TV show or like a YA novel, I would be like, yes, oh, yeah. I love this. I would be all over it. But it's not, it's real life. It's real life. Because <laughs> how I felt like he experienced that moment was he was so fed up with her. Mm. Like she kissed him and he was like, you're all over the place. Like, I was oh my like, gosh, I'm exhausted. You're like running away from me. You say you're going to leave. You're punishing me for kissing somebody else. Then you kiss me. I don't trust your words. You're so, you're like the, you have integrated your values so fully. For me, I'm like the toxic part of me. Like, this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a toxic part of me that's like, yeah, it's like, that's this so is so funny. fucking cute. But oh, I mean, it definitely, I mean, it's, so funny. it's really funny that you like were icked out by it. I, I was, was so icked out. I was like, love it, ship it. I want it. That's more of so it, funny. please. Give me more scenes. Give me more of it. I just make it into a whole television show. Just Joey and Maria. I just want to see it. I'm like living. I'm thriving. But I love you. that you say it. <laughs> yeah, because it was, I mean, I was, I really liked them together so much. And it was so funny because I could see that she just wanted to use her charm Yes. In that situation, she was being a little bit flirty. Even when they had their conversation, when the uh, rose ceremony cocktail hour yes. was canceled, she was <laughs> smiling because I think she's very used to having her way. She's I think very so. Used to getting what she wants by being a little bit. Because when you throw people off like that, it's just uh, it keeps you on your toes. Yeah, it keeps things really exciting. I just don't think Joey wants that. I, yeah. He like wants it peeled back. So yeah, if I was in that situation and my partner did that to me, oh yeah, I would have like driven home and been like, I don't know. If I'm oh gonna totally. Again. Again. I mean, it's so funny. Like we watched this episode together live. We did. My partner, who is also here, was watching it, and like I was like, I think I've done this before, and maybe I should include this. <laughs> Done it I think we've all done this. I've done it before. That's the thing. It's like, I actually think that this is, this it's behavior from Maria, relatable. relatable, common. I think every, not everyone, but many of us have like, maybe done a version of this, especially yeah. like, I think in your 20s, that is like a, yes, it, that's like a, teens and 20s. You're like, like that push and pull is so, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's exciting. It's like, it's, you're like in the eye of a storm. Yeah. When you're in it's like the thrill of it. And it's thrilling. You're you know, right. like that feeling of like, I'm walking out the door and I'm just like that man, my man's going to run after me and be like, don't go. Like, you know, yeah. that whole thing. It's like it's the stuff of movies. It's just not the stuff of real life. It's not the stuff of real life. Exactly. Yes. It, for sure. Because I've done it before where you're in a conver in an argument with somebody and you get up to walk away, wanting them to grab your yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then come back. If it was in a K drama, they'd grab your arm and it would be slow mo. And then the flowers. Uh, flowers <laughs> appear around flowers, you. Like, <laughs> around. And then, you know, close up of the face. Yes. Like, then you kiss. Exactly. And then he pulls you in. <gasps> See, yeah, but that's 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 the part of me that exactly. has absorbed too many rom coms, exactly. too many K dramas. Like it's like that is exactly what we have to analyze. Well, we shows. have to analyze it, <laughs> right? Because like in the past, I like really thrived right. on it so much, but now it's like okay, I'm not even gonna let it get to that point. Right, exactly. If, I'm, if it's getting to that point, my communication techniques have failed. Yes, <laughs> my yes. understanding has failed. My listening has failed. Say more. I am not yes. like connected to my partner anymore. Yes. I'm just 
retaliating. Yes. Oh, and Maria retaliated last I night. I know. And you know what? I appreciate the fact that Joey also stood up for himself. Like, after... Yeah, he did. Oh, he was so pissed. Oh, I've was, never seen him annoyed. He's like never that. been... I feel like he's never been, like, ups, like, ang- like kind of... He was angry. Yeah. I, I, his he, face completely shut down. Yeah, he was like, are we seriously doing this? Like, yes. I am been so into you and now you're gonna do try to pull yes. me into this like oh unhealthy dynamic of push pull like I don't want this I want to secure a stable relationship I don't mm-hmm. want you running out the door mm-hmm. like and that's the thing the truth is in a healthy partnership no one's threatening to leave no one is running out the door no one is playing those kinds of games because it's a game at the end of the day it's a game and in a healthy commitment that stuff doesn't happen and this goes back to actually what we were saying about the daisy thing it's like i want someone who hates me even though they love me and hate me at the same time as a game we don't play games in a healthy Mm. relationship and like that's the thing like maria was still and the fact she's smiling through it all tells you it's still a little bit in that yeah that kind of gamey phase Ooh, and joey she's so chaotic right she's i mean i kind of she's great tv and i kind of love it would be, <laughs> she'd be an amazing bachelorette i want her for bachelorette for sure her season would be really fun to cover uh, but i could see it like she was uh, she was getting off on it because this is the thing it's worked with her and Joey. Uh, yeah. Her being a little bit of that um, intensity, that chaos, the unpredictability, her standing up for her emotions. But in this situation, he's so sensitive to it yeah. that it was absolutely the wrong call. And it was fascinating when he, uh, when they were having their conversation, it genuinely felt like they were having like a boyfriend girlfriend fight on TV. Yeah. As soon as she was being emotional about, I don't like it, you know, I've claimed you, you're mine, you're kissing other people. And then he said, You always discredit what we have. And I was like, This seems like a real fight. I like, know. I was right. like, Whoa. Like, when he said that, I, I even. Like, what have you, t- what have you said? I that know. To Maria? I was like, <laughs> What am I watching? I'm telling you, I wanted a whole, like, yeah, yeah YA novel. Or like a like a whole TV series about these two, fictional, like but <laughs> fictional. You got to write the fanfic. I know. I want to write the fanfic about these two. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. That's when she said that, or he said that to her. I was a little bit like, whoa. Why did you say that? There is um, mm-hmm. there is something in their relationship that feels so much more real. Like it doesn't even compare to some of the other relationships that feel fairy tale. Fairy tale, a little yeah. bit like foofy. And you know, mm-hmm. with Maria and Joey, that's the other thing of why I keep like. I do find myself gravitating toward them or like yeah. wanting to root for them in a way because there is so much that feels very real about them. But you're right, there's also so much that's unhealthy. And that is, it is so hard to divide those two things. And mm-hmm. it is really hard to, you know, commit to like, I'm I'm looking for a healthy, real love, not the like fun fantasy. I mean, cause it's fun. The games are fun, but like, if you're looking for a real healthy relationship, that's not what it's about. And Mm -hmm. I think that Joey, to your point, got upset because he is really looking for that actual commitment. And that was not the behavior of someone who is in a place to give it to him. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that I'm happy that he even sat her down and was like, listen, I know you have your fears. I know you have your needs. I understand your emotions. And also, you gotta understand me too. I, I have my fears. Yeah. I have my needs too. And like you are triggering a fear in me. And basically what he's saying is that like you can I want you to be real with me, tell me your emotions, but we gotta figure out how to talk about this in a way that is also okay for me. Mm-hmm. We gotta figure out a way to talk about this in a way that's not gonna trigger the things that are happening for me. You gotta think about me the same way I'm thinking about you. I'm I'm looking out for you, you gotta look out for me, even mm-hmm. if you're telling me something that's hard. I think Maria got it too. I think she was a little bit like after that, she was like, oh, I regret doing that. Right. Like, I think she understood that it like was a bit of a self-sabotage to your yeah. point. She like understood that it, this is not the relationship for that. I hope that they make it work. And yeah. Maybe they won't do it again, and then, I don't know, I like that. I <laughs> it's funny because Joey is so stable, and he's looking for somebody that can give him that spike in intensity, but he's not looking for a rocky boat, his entire right. relationship. Right, right. And Maria is that, and maybe she needs somebody that can, that's not their core trauma, mm. where they can actually hold it down for her, but not get so activated by not being chosen. Yeah, like yeah. Not feeling that full commitment. Because the truth is, like, I say that that's not, like, a healthy commitment or, like, what a, a healthy relationship looks like. But, I mean, I'm sure people in the comments, I'm sure people watching this are like, well, that's the beginning of my relationship is like, or, like, yeah. I know people who have that kind of relationship and it works for them. 
that's true. Yes, there are people who deal with that kind of relationship who are okay with it. And some people even thrive in it. And there are people who have that level of uh, chaos energy that Maria has. And you just have to have the right partner to be the stable rock, to not be um, hurt by it. And like yeah. to kind of be able to reel that person back in and help them kind of guide them out of that kind of toxic pattern or that, that those behaviors that are not helping the relationship. Mm -hmm. But for yes. Joey, to yes. your point, it's like, this is his wound is that he's afraid of not getting chosen. He's afraid of someone walking out on him. So this is not a compatible, it's like that chaos and that wound are like, really, it's hard to make a relationship work mm -hmm. with these two specific characteristics. And so, Ooh. you know, and the nuance of that too, is maybe he could, if she wasn't, I think that for her to be this emotional this early on about an experience that they know that they both signed up to be on, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of, okay, I'm not even that sure about you. And now you're asking me to cater to you. Mm -hmm. If I had committed to you, maybe that would be a different story. What? Maybe I would be able to completely commit and dedicate myself to not only allowing you to have your feelings, but working on that with you. Right. But the way that Maria kind of got in her head, because Kelsey A got in her head, right. but she didn't throw a tantrum like right, that. Right. And Jen got in her head, but she didn't throw a tantrum like that either. Right, right. So this early on, I can see why his ears immediately, he was like, whoa, this what? is like, this is bizarre. Like, it's literally a, part, a fact of the season. What is it going to be like when another thing happens right. is she going to act like this is this a person i'm signing up to right. choose if this is how she's reacting emotionally right so i completely get why he has distanced himself from her and if she didn't go home this season i mean this episode she didn't she's gonna go home the next episode Ugh, okay i guess we'll see i don't I know she will. i'm clouded by how much i like her yeah. so and because the preview too of her dad yeah it seems like her dad i mean Maria got it from somewhere, right? like mm, where someone just completely catered to her. And the dad was like, Maria is 100% a daddy's girl. Like mm. she is somebody that he really looks out for, spoils, pay attention. It's not a bad thing, but that might cause a little bit of hostility or Interesting. antagonism Interesting. in their dynamic. Where it's like, are you choosing Maria fully? And then that's going to be like, oh my gosh, Joe yeah. is just trying to make a decision. What, with what he wants versus what three people and their families want. So right. I think he might spiral Oof, a little bit. Gosh, I'm really excited for this hometown. <laughs> I'm not always excited for hometowns, but this hometown is usually boring. It's usually a little boring, but this one actually seems like it's going to be, um, yeah. there's going to be quite a lot going on here. He's so sensitive to other people's yeah. feelings and needs. And now it's not just the four girls. It's going to be the four girl, girls and their families. Right. I imagine that's going to be very, um, having quite an impact on him and how he's thinking about the situation. So do you think that he's the bachelor where hometowns will impact his decision? Because some people it does, some people it doesn't. Where he'll meet their family and he'll, do you think that'll factor into like who he's choosing? As a person who like generally doesn't find hometowns to be that like impactful or, in, or okay. impactful, like uh, that's, that's just my personal bias. We've talked mm. about this before. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I relate to Jen in the sense that like, I have a similar thought of, I wouldn't say that my family's opinion of my partner is the defining thing of like, if they're the right person for me. I mean, I'm very close to my family, but it's like, I don't have that kind of, <laughs> that relationship with my family. Valley. So I'm always a little bit biased about this. I, mm. I don't really understand the degree to which they're, everyone like cares a lot so much about who's my mom going to think of him. And like, I care, but like, how much do I care? <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know. So that's my, that might be my bias. I believe it's going to impact him. Yeah. And it's not the approval as much as the ease. Mm. I have a feeling that he just does not like too much conflict, trouble. He wants an easy path to walk. So maybe the family that's the easiest, the connection that feels the best, he is kind of plugging that together mm. to create the best outcome. And the best outcome for him is an outcome that he feels like he can fully commit and choose mm. to. And that's the reason why complexity or uncertainty of any kind, he may find like his window of tolerance for that just feels quite low. Mm. Anything where he's like, I'm not totally sure how I feel. He kind of just yeah. moves out and he's like, okay, I want the simplicity. I mean, retweet. <laughs>
<laughs> You're gonna make me uncomfortable. Get out of here. I don't <laughs> want it. So I get it. I get it, Joey. So <laughs> we'll really see it not only in hometowns, but when he. Oh my God, fantasy suites. Fantasy Jesus. suites. What's gonna happen? And when they meet his family, because Joey has two gay dads and a stepdad. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be. And his sister is a social worker. So I just feel like they're just emotionally tapped in. Yeah. And they're really going to be able to, I can see his family being like, I think you should. Do because this remember that. with, whose season was it? Was it Charity's season? Where they didn't like one of her, was it Dotton? Who They didn't like one of her guys? They oh. didn't like one of her guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't like- And she got mad. Charity got into it with her mom. Yes. Oh, that yeah. was really cute. I loved that scene. I love that. That was too. one of my favorite scenes. And that mom was like, "I'm not telling you who to pick. Go make your own decision." Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, you're yes, right. yes. So I wonder if Joey is going to have a dynamic with that with his family, especially if he struggles with people pleasing, and his family knows there are some themes he's working on mm. moving out and like integrating these healthier aspects mm. of himself. So I actually think he's going to listen to them. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Well, let us know down below. Yeah. What do you all think about Joey's journey? Do you have a sense of who you think he's going to pick? What are the things that he seems to care the most about to you in these relationships? And how much do you think the hometowns, both his own hometowns and the women's hometowns are going to impact his decision. Let's keep this conversation going down below. Okay, so that's it for this week's episode. So happy to have Kelly in town Yay. to do this together. And it's so cute. Week. It's so fun. It's so cute. It's like, so much better to do it in person. I know, because we can like look at each other yeah. and like kind of like vibe. It's we're so actually cute. having a conversation. Right. Sorry if we were like looking at each other more than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very special guest coming for next week's episode. So if you've enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.